Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on FlossTube and also on Instagram as well. Welcome along to the morning briefing. I really missed everybody last week. Um, if you're new to my channel, I do normally record every week, but last week was a bit of an exception and we'll go into that in a minute. Um, but it is the 2nd of May today. It's the 1st of May today. Well, it's the 1st of May now for me because I'm recording at like half past 10 at night because it takes me that long to upload my videos overnight due to um, really poor rural broadband. But um, happy mania, happy mania everyone. So I hope you've got all your plans sorted. I am anxious to start. I haven't actually managed to start my first piece yet. Um, I've got it to show you, but I haven't managed to put a stitch in it yet. And I've just realized I forgot to grab the fabric out, but never mind, it'll all be fine. Uh, this is floss tube number 27. This is a floss tube all about cross stitch. That's that's what you get from me, just, just about cross stitch. Very occasionally the odd other thing, but very, very occasionally. Right, first of all, I'm gonna introduce you to my new best thing in the world, Marjorie and Dave. So, Marjorie and Dave are the stars of my new feature, which is called Tit Cam. Um, Tit Cam is our little camera inside our nest box and we have two blue tits um, and I've called them Marjorie and Dave. Um, I've got a little bit of footage that I shared on my Instagram but I will put it in here as well and that was a couple of weeks ago. Dave came along and he cleared out the nest box and basically what he did was he banged and crashed about a bit um, like like like, like blokes do, um, banged and crashed about a bit to make sure that she could hear that he was doing something in the in the box. And then over the last couple of weeks, she's built a lovely nest. And so the second bit of footage you'll see is her snuggled up in her nest overnight. So Dave's not in there, um, just Marjorie. I think Dave has to stay out in the cold, but I'm sure if she manages to lay some eggs and the, the chicks hatch, we'll see Dave popping in as well to help Marjorie out. But uh, yeah, it's lovely to see. So I hope you enjoy the little clip. So last weekend, last weekend we were due to go home to the Cotswolds um, to pick mum up because mum's come to stay with us for some childcare purposes, form a little bubble with us um, for the next few weeks. And bearing in mind, this is the first thing that we have had to do in 12 months that we've not been able to move. So this, it had to be this weekend. Um, can't change it. Both Chris and I on Wednesday got a text saying, your vaccination is on Saturday. So we tried to see if we could change it, but we couldn't get in any earlier to the vaccination centre. So in Wales, I think it's different to how they've done it in England, definitely. In Wales, you just get a text saying, this is when your appointment's booked for. In England, there's certainly the friends that I've had um, have had their vaccination, they've been invited to make an appointment. But no, we were given an appointment. So uh, half past one on Saturday, we were still in Cardigan and we had our vaccinations. So we both had the Oxford AstraZeneca one, uh, no problem at all. I love vaccines anyway, I love injections. I quite happily have injections all day long, I love it. Um, no, yeah, no side effects really. I felt a bit sick and I did have a day off, um, a day off school on the Tuesday because I just kept getting waves of nausea. And when you're trying to wear a mask all day and talk and have a wave of nausea at the same time, I just couldn't cope with it on the Tuesday so um, I did have a day off but Chris was fine and, and very much back to normal the following day anyway. So yeah we are both first vaccinations down so looking forward to getting the second one but then we hot footed it down to, to mum's on the Saturday afternoon because I had my hair appointment on the Sunday. Um, I don't know if you can really tell very much what she's done. She's taken a, I've got a bit of an inverted bob at the back so I've had a lot of the weight taken out the back and um, I, I'm going really, really grey and I love it. I really love it. It's bright white um, and I don't know if it's going to show up so much in this light, but basically she put in some more grey um, to try and just tamp down the little bits of brown that I've still got because my grey that's coming through is bright white and I can't wait until it's that really, really bright grey. 
and I keep asking her if she will just dye it really bright grey for me but um, in order to do it you have to completely bleach it and she said you have to take it really to the edge of its life before it will take the grey dye properly um, so yeah I'm just putting up with nearly grey slightly blonde and then hopefully in the next few years I'll just have my own bright white hair I can't wait right what have we got so oh really excellent news on two fronts for UK stitchers first of all the Nimble Thimble has got a website so Chris at the Nimble Thimble launched her website ooh, a week or so ago might have been two weeks ago now no I think a week or so ago and um, of course I had to put in a little order so I'll show you something that I've got in haul and um, Northumberland Sampler House <coughs> oh, excuse me on Etsy uh, Anita started dyeing fabric so she had a little sale this morning for her first few pieces so I managed I'm very lucky I managed to grab a piece called coffee which I can't wait to see it's slightly darker um, 35 count I've gone for and I know she's busy dyeing some more because it sold out just like that and I was on my Etsy app and I managed to grab a piece and I thought I better pay for it quickly so I paid for it went back to go and grab another piece and then my Etsy app was just just broken I think she managed to break in uh, Etsy this morning so good luck to her and hopefully it's going to become another source of um, fabulous dyed fabrics for us all can't wait right 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 I have had two finishes this week this month, my arse and gear April hasn't turned out to be quite as productive as I thought it was going to be. Mm, mainly because I was still stuck on my 36 count sulky kick. And I'll show you a bit more progress on one of those projects in a minute. So yeah, I'd really planned at the start of the month and I look back on my um, Etsy, not Etsy, I can't talk today, on my Excel, Excel tracker. Um, and I'd sort of highlighted in purple all the ones that I thought, yeah, if I really get on with it, I could get a finish. And I think I've got one of those done. I've got two finishes, but one, only one of the ones that I'd earmarked for trying and getting done. Because obviously I want to start a load of new things next month. So I was trying to get my um, get my whip cake down and whip count down a little bit. Can you tell I'm out of practice? That week, that extra week just seems so, so long. Right, maybe if I just show some cross stitch, that'll that'll help and uh, I'll just have a quick yes it is a Kilmer jar we do drink out of jars around here I've got quite a lot of jars right okay so my first finish and what I've done as I've tried to put all my stuff in a box in front of me because even last video I got sick, sick of myself disappearing off down behind to try and pick things up and I've just realised I'm wearing the same jumper. So if this is only your second video with me, I do have other clothes. It just appears that I'm wearing this, this jumper. I've been in the garage all day, sorting out the garage. So we've got a double, nearly a treble garage, and it is stacked full with stuff. It is it's to the point of being ridiculous. So now the charity shops are back open and the tip is back open, stuff is going at a rate of knots. Right. So, this, if you remember, if I got that around the right way, yes, I am showing you the front, is the first in my unfinished sampler series. So, this is unfinished sampler series number one, and this I called Maud after Laura from Render and the Serial Starter. She, she is our serial starter, so I like the fact that uh, this young girl, it may have been a young boy, but this young girl possibly, probably, um, started this one and then decided that she had other things that she wanted to do. Now the original is stitched on 46 count, I think I worked it out as, 46 count and it's stitched with, it's sort of black, it's a very very dark blue thread and so if you've been with me for a little while, a few weeks now, I charted this one and I released it for um, for everyone to have a go at finishing the sampler if they wanted to and there's been quite a few people who finished their unfinished sampler and so if you look on the hashtag on uh, Instagram you can see those people who finished theirs and I finished mine so let me show you and then I'll tell you a little bit about how I did it 
So there is my unfinished sampler, which is now finished. So this is on a piece of 36 count, I want to say Oaken, by Picture This Plus. I want to say it, but I can't say it. Picture This Plus. And basically I have got exactly what was on the original. I didn't extend any lines, I didn't take out the little ampersand at the bottom. I've just got exactly what was on there. And what I did in order to stitch it was first of all I kind of picked out a sampler palette, a palette of colours that I thought would make quite a nice sampler. Let me just put that out of the way and then I can show you. And I literally just grabbed from Stash. So there's my ring of colours. There's a few Victorian mottos in there um, from a very old, a very old delivery. So don't, don't be thinking I've got any more deliveries. I haven't. Um, and so there's a few Victorian mottos. The black that I used, or the blue black I used, blackboard. And there's quite a lot there because I've got a plan for the other ones, but they're just all on there at the moment. And then I've got oh, a little bit of Weeks Dye Works cocoa and a little bit of Weeks Dye Works scripts as well. So I just picked out a palette and then I used this book which is the new Brenda Keys book which is um, the Ultimate Sampler Motifs book and I chose, I just went through and I photocopied, there you go, I photocopied some of the motifs that I really, really liked. And then in the back, there is a piece of graph paper, which is in the same scale as the motifs. So I photocopied the graph paper and I marked out the bit that I had on the unfinished sampler. So this is the unfinished bit. So you've got your alphabets would be above here. And I picked out three main motifs, which were the three trees. And then I just put those so that I knew that they would actually fit. So they were my main motifs. And then the rest, I just freehanded. I just looked in the sampler motif book, found an alphabet I liked or a, um, a motif that I liked and I just put it wherever I wanted to because one of the things that I really like about old samplers is that they're not symmetrical they're not scaled there's not always the same gap between this motif and that motif and I, I like that and I knew if I planned it out completely from start to finish my brain would try and do that so there's loads of errors that I would say but there's loads of little quirks like for example where it says wrought by my G's hang much lower than they would have done if I'd really planned out where I was going to stitch it but I really like that um, my name here is actually one square too close it doesn't fit as a, an over two it fits more of an over one um, I went one slightly farther over on one of the L's but it doesn't matter I really like it and this is for my auntie Jeannie, who I've spoken to you a little bit about before. Her name was Jeannie Lucas and she was born in 1926. And the other set of initials here I've got are my daughter's because her middle name is Jeannie after my godmother. Um, the black cat, she always loved, always loved cats. Um, and then I just liked, I just liked the other motifs. I can see why girls put in these little doodads because they're quite handy little space fillers but I was keen not to fill every little bit of the space. I like this little squirrel down here he's eating the holly berries that have come off the holly tree and I'm super super pleased with that I really wanted to give myself just that bit of freedom just to sort of evolve it and see 
see what happened with it and I'm I'm really really pleased with it and I can't wait to get them both framed in the same type of frame and then hung next to each other on the wall and I've still got another half another bit down there so that I can do something else this was part of my picture this plus club from the patchwork rabbit so super pleased with that and I only finished that one up today I was gonna get it so it was nearly finished but I managed to I managed to finish it so there's that one right I am just going to throw things down here though. As long as I'm not trying to pick them up again, I'm just going to throw them down. My second finish, and I forgot to bring up the box actually. So this is, oh that's dangerous, leaving an uncapped pen near stitching. This is my um, piece that I bought from Owl Forest Embroidery. And I am probably going to butcher this. I'm going to put the English spelling of it down below. But I believe it's Vodanyoy. Vodanyoy. Um, and he's basically like a water, a water spirit. Um, so this is him riding on a sturgeon. And you can see that great border all the way around the outside with the sturgeon fish and the dragonflies and the, the lobsters. And he's riding, I think he's riding actually on a carp. Sturgeon are a bit more pointy and uh, scaly than that. I think that's meant to be a, not a carp, sorry, a catfish. I think that's meant to be a catfish. All those years of watching uh, Matt Hayes fishing programmes on a Saturday morning just because I love fishing programmes. <laughs> I can't fish, I've never caught a fish, but I love fishing programmes. <laughs> And it's stitched on a zoiga, 32 count zoiga, and I would say it's about dirty colour. Um, there should have been a few extra sort of brown birds in the background, but I just didn't care for them, so I left them off. Now, the one thing, the reason I wanted to bring the box up was because of the leftover thread. Now, on the picture on the front of this, the person who stitched the picture has got much more definite use of the the variegation in the in the threads than I've got. Mine's a little bit more random and you know it's like when you first have a kit from somebody you're never sure whether there's going to be lots of thread or not enough thread and so I sort of just stitched it pretty much as it came and I'm happy with it but I didn't try and paint with the threads. I do always do my full, my crosses as a full cross with variegated thread and our forest embroidery threads, the ones certainly in this kit, are pretty variegated. Sometimes you only get a slight change, but these ones, you get quite a lot of change. So, for example, these sturgeons, this is all one thread. This flower here is the same thread as this flower here. So you do get quite a colour change in them. And I had plenty of thread, and I probably could have done more sort of colour painting with them. But um, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. I think I've got a frame that would fit that one. I did toy about doing something else with it, but um, I think I will frame it in the end. So there's that one. So that's my, my second finish. And then I have got a couple of whips that I've been working on. One I posted on Instagram, which was my... Frisian eye chart by Quiltify Designs. Sorry, got a bit of fluff on it there. By Quiltify Designs, which I'm stitching on a piece of platinum 36 count Zweigart. And I did iron it, it's gone a bit. So when I showed you it two weeks ago, I just had most of the letter A. I've finished all the letters, I've just got a real row of numbers to go along the bottom there. And then I've got the back stitch to do around the letters. So I've done some, and I think it's just going to be a case of over this the course of this month and the next few weeks, just kind of plodding on and taking, trying to do a couple of letters every so often to get all that back stitch done. I really, really like this design, 
Um, this is a fat quarter. The whole piece of fabric is a fat quarter and I've got it folded in half. I'll show you what's on the back in a minute, just in case you haven't seen, because she's there. Um, so that is a fat eighth and it takes up pretty much a fat eighth if you were imagining you've got, you know, framing allowances and things as well. So I, as I said, I've stitched this in sulky, in black sulky, but the back stitch I'm actually doing in black DMC, just one strand of black DMC, because it's just thinner. And so it gives you that definition in the back stitch as well. So I have absolutely loved doing this and I can't wait to get this framed because I just think it's really, really quirky. In case you're wondering, you haven't seen this before, that's what's on the back. Lawrence May Piggin, Little Miss Piggin, finished. And I'd had her finished last week, last, last time I filmed, so two weeks ago. But just because she's there, I will show her to you. So that's my whip. I've also worked on a gentleman's daughter as well. And I can't find it. I think it must be at school. I think I must have done another job and left it on my desk because I can't find it anywhere else. So if it's not at school when I go back on Tuesday, I'm gonna have to start panicking and have a think about, about what I've done with her, um, or done with it. It's probably at school, it's probably at school. I haven't had much time to stitch at school really. It's all been a little bit, uh, a little bit rushed really. Um, what with all the assessments and everything going on, I could normally get half a strand or a strand in at, at lunchtime because we get an hour for lunch. Um, Cause we're quite a rural school. I know lots of inner city schools or, or more um, town-based schools have a much shorter lunch because the kids can easily stay after school for various clubs and, and sporting events and things like that. But when ours, some of ours travel probably over an hour on the bus in the morning. So to then have that at the end of the day as well. So that's why we tend to have a longer lunch. So I can normally get a strand or two, depends on how, how quick I eat really, um, in at lunchtime. But I, it's just been crazy busy recently, so I haven't, haven't been doing that. Right, what's in here? Oh, this is the, I'll just show you this, it's in here. This is the chart for the Friesen Archer eye chart by Cortify Designs. It's owned by somebody, uh, the company on Etsy is owned by somebody called Benjamin, who is lovely to chat with. So, um, do go along and have a look they have got some really really lovely samplers um, they're all shown I think they're all shown monochromatically but obviously you can do whatever you like with them but they are beautiful beautiful designs and a little bit quirky as well so if you're looking for something slightly different go and check them out on Etsy and I will link them below right what else have I got you wait till you get to the hall <laughs> yeah right so this is something else I've been working on I have been a little bit remiss this month and I've not managed to get my monthly ornament done and this is the first month I haven't managed to do it and I it's partly because I procrastinated I was trying to work on my Brooks books uh, Annie the Autumn Witch and I have done some more on her, but I wasn't that close to a finish. And I thought, well, I should, I, should I try and leave her alone and then quickly try and get a finish on something else? Quickly do like a start and finish or something. And then I was like, no, I'll just do a bit more. And, and then, then I just kind of ran out of time. So I do have a bit of progress on her. Just find the... Now this one has been going backwards and forwards to school, so the rest of the... The rest of the perforated paper is a little bit uh, dog-eared, but it'll be fine. So I've done, I think I had her hat finished and I think I'd done sort of like the outline of her skirt. Um, but I've worked a little bit more on the, some of the, so this is gonna be a basket and she's, she's holding the basket and then there's gonna be things in the basket. And then obviously you've got her head up here. And then on the side there, that is the start up the basket so you can't really see that bit too well but it won't matter so much because then you, you what you do is you cut that bit out and then it goes it goes on there and I've got some darker browns to put in it and I think I'm going to put some um, some chronic in it as well 
So I'm hoping that this will be a finish for the end of next month and I'll be able to catch up a little April ornament as well because I really would like to have 12, 12 ornaments. They're not all for Christmas, um, some are Halloween, some are St Patrick's, some are Christmas, but it'd be nice to have 12, 12 ornaments ready for next year, ready for next year. Right. The other thing I haven't finished is I haven't finished my Pantini Pantini April either. I've stitched a lot, but just not quite what I thought I was going to do. But that's the way it goes, isn't it? That is the way it goes sometimes. Right. I'm just having a little wet of my whistle. Mm. Oh, I must show you. Have you guys heard of Zox bands, yeah? So they're these um, very popular in America, these little wristbands. And this is the slightly fatter one and they do a slightly thinner one as well. And the idea is that they come with a little card that's got kind of like affirmations and um, love tokens and things like that on them. And then on the inside they say something else as well that the wearer knows. So um, Chris bought himself one and he bought one for Ness as well. And then he saw this one and he was like, I knew I had to get that one for you. So this a lumberjack with a beard. The crazy blue bull, but that looks exactly like exactly like Chris. So I don't know where the blue bull come from. We haven't got a blue bull. Freebie. Now I just grabbed this one just because I just like the sentiment of this one. It is a hands-on design, and it's called Thank You. There is never a wrong time. To say thank you and I think that is just a lovely sentiment and as we're coming out of lockdown it might be appropriate for a few folks so I really like this sort of quilt patch on the side there as well so I'll put the link for that one down below and you can go and print off yourself a copy for that one now the rest is haul and happy mail. Now there's one bit of happy mail that I can't show you and that I will be including in my next video because I just couldn't get it in this one. I thought this one's going to be long enough as it is, catch up, trying to you know, let you know everything that's been going on and, uh, and so on and so forth. So um, I have got a new stitching light. So some of you might have seen it uh, on other floss tubers, a company called Ben Q and they contacted me ages ago actually about whether I would review a light in exchange for the gift of the light and at the time they didn't have any UK stock in and the import fees were ridiculous and I said well yeah, I would be interested I said but let me know when you've got UK stock because I can't recommend something to people with those such high import fees on and so they contacted me back again mm, three weeks ago I suppose now and said yeah we've got our UK stock in it's on UK Amazon this is the um, the link to it you can see. We'd, we'd still like to send you one. So they sent me one and it's fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. So I wanna do a proper review um, of that next week. In the meantime, if anybody's been looking at one and wants to ask me any questions, just, um, just pop them down below. But if not, I will show you properly next week. Right, oh my goodness me. <coughs> Got a frog in my throat. It better stay there. It actually better stay there. I'd rather have it in my throat than on my stitching. <laughs> Okie dokie. Right, haul. I'm going to preface this with an addict's sayings. So any addict probably will say this. So next month, May, because I've got all my things planned, I am going to try not to spend any money. Except I bought some fabric this morning, but that was from Anita, and Anita supported my channel before, so I've got to support her, haven't I? That's okay. Uh, except I have got an order in, in Russia at the moment, uh, with Nitka Moscow, but that was last month, but you might see it come in this month, I'm hoping. Except I've got an order in, in the States with Country Sampler, which I ordered last month, April, which hopefully will come in this month. So other than that, other than that, and if I need the odd thread, 
I'm trying not to spend any money in April. Unless, of course, an absolute unicorn turns up. I don't really have absolute unicorns, so yeah, it shouldn't do. It shouldn't do. But yeah, grab a grab a brew. <laughs> um, right. Who am I going to blame for all of these? I've got to blame blame somebody, haven't I? Right. Let's start off with Chris at the Nimble Thimble. Let's blame her. Let's blame her for opening a website. Let me find my two things that I bought from her. So yeah, if you've not checked out the Nimble Thimble, go and check it out. You might need to go back fairly frequently because obviously you know what it's like with a, um, a website, the more, it takes a little bit of time to get everything on there. Um, she's one woman in the shop, or I don't know if she's got any help with the website, but she was woman, one woman in the shop in the Etsy, uh, not Etsy, eBay store. Um, so keep checking back. So I chose from from Chris. I chose Nikki's Creations Button Girl. I've never stitched anything from Nikki's Creations before, so I'm really looking forward to to stitching that. And I just love the fact that I can use some of my vintage buttons on there. So I got that one, and then I had never seen this one before. I'm going to take it out of the packet. This is by Praiseworthy Stitches and it's called Creepy Pumpkin Stackers and basically you make those pumpkins and so the chart is, let's see if I can give you a little tiny bit, you get like the ovals that you're going to need to sew the pumpkins together to make them the round shape and then each oval's got a little bit to stitch on it. So by the time you've stitched them all and put them all together, you can make these pumpkins. And I'd never seen them before and I thought they were brilliant. I have got some pumpkins actually to stitch ready for this year, which are on a similar line, but they're a different shape. That's okay, right? They're a different shape pumpkin. And I'm gonna probably use the similar colors to those because I quite like the greens and the oranges. Whereas the pumpkins I've got to stitch already are orange. This is an addict talking now. <laughs> I've come to that conclusion. I'm put my hands in the air, I will freely admit it. Come and join me in the Crazy Addict Club. I'm happy. And stitching and collecting cross stitch patterns are two separate hobbies. Yeah, are we all done with that? Good. Right, so that was Chris. I'm blaming Chris for that one. Okay. These two, um, I am blaming the Stitching Whippet, I think. She showed something that she was stitching from this book by Marjorie Massey, and I absolutely love Marjorie Massey patterns. She showed, now I haven't earmarked it, so this is probably a bad idea, the little snail pattern. If I can't find it, I'll put a picture up. Yeah, I'll put a picture up. She showed this little snail pattern and I absolutely loved it. And the reason she even tagged me in the book was because when she got her copy, there was a little unfinished piece in it. So she was saying, look, um, Michelle, I've got an unfinished sampler um, that came with this book. And so she just happened to show me the book and I was, oh, I've got to have it, I've got to have it. So I grabbed this one from eBay. Now I think they are out of print and I think they tend generally, again words, go for a reasonably pretty penny, but this one was £12. So I, I don't know whether I just struck right or whether this one isn't quite as expensive as the other one. Um, so lots and lots of kind of hearts and monochromatic or nearly monochromatic patterns. What I'm going to do, um, I did mention when I showed this on Instagram that I would do um, a flip through. I think what I'll probably do is do a flip through of this one and the other book in one little video and do it just a bit like I did with the uh, Emma Congdon book and just turn the, the photographs of the, fi the finished pieces into a little video reel that you can just flick through if you get the chance to, to grab these books. They're brilliant, they really are brilliant. So this one is the second one I got. Now I don't know which is the first and which is the second in um, in publication, 
but this one comes with a folio of eight of the bigger patterns and I can't show you anything from there because they are literally just the patterns but it is filled with beautiful samplers there's so many that I would want to stitch I really like that one and I really like this one that has the little darning almost like the little darning patches on that one but this one now I showed this one on my Instagram and I showed another one as well which is similar uh, can I find it very quickly if not yeah there it is so there's the other one which is similar now I've got no floss tubers to report this week in fact all last week because I've really not been watching that much floss tube uh, the only floss tube that I've really watched, I watched Joyfield Stitcher this morning, Annie, so I hope you're feeling better soon, Annie, with your, your kidney stone. Um, she's the only one I've, I've watched because I have been line of duty obsessed. Obsessed with line of duty. And um, for those of you in America, we are on series six. And tonight, so Sunday when you see this, the Sunday morning briefing, Tonight is the finale, the season finale of season six. So it's episode seven of season six. All of the rest of the episodes or seasons have had six episodes. This one has got seven and it is amazing. So for the last two or three weeks, I went right back to season one and started all over again. So I'm now halfway through watching season three. And so, um, yeah, I'm sort of half watching one series and then waiting for the finale of the current series. Now, we all know Ted, Ted Hastings. He has got the best lines in the show. Vicky McClure's got the best hair and Ted Hastings has got uh, the best, the best lines. Um, so one of the things he said was Jesus, Mary and Joseph and the wee donkey uh, last week. And I just absolutely loved that. So I am planning to stitch. I want to get it started so that I can just do a bit of fill-in whilst Line of Duty's on. But in all honesty, I end up normally just putting it down and just concentrating. I'm not quite like Jenny from Gogglebox who has to have it written down on a notepad. But uh, I am going to stitch in order of Ted Hastings, in honour of Ted Hastings, I am going to stitch this donkey. I don't think I'm going to stitch the rest. I think I'm just going to do um, a little pillow finish for the donkey. Um, sure Ted's gonna last the final episode I'm not sure he's made a few little aside comments and I'm wondering whether he's for the chop right what else have I got I have got a couple of patterns from Mojo Stitches on Etsy no that's part of something else and I have got I was shown these by Laurie from Mischievous Stitches and I just love them. So I've got this one which is called Sarah Handley 1847 and I just loved it because it's a house but it's a big, a big house, totally different style to what we would normally, normally see with those big palm trees at the bottom. So it's Mojo Stitches on Etsy, Etsy, I don't know why I keep stumbling over Etsy and eBay today. Mojo Stitches on Etsy. You can get the PDF, you can get the paper chart and they also have the thread packs available as well because they use a lot of cottage garden threads. Um, but they give, I'll just show you on the back there, the model was stitched in cot cottage garden, they give full DMC but they also give an over dyed conversion as well. So that's Sarah Handley. And then the other one that I picked out, uh, and that was the thread list for this one you've just seen actually, was Take Wing, which is number two in the Bushland Quaker series. And I just think that is absolutely genius. And I know uh, Michelle Bendy is stitching it at the moment, and there is a stitch along, and I'll put the, the hashtag along the bottom. I'm not going to be starting it anytime soon, because it's not part of my mania plans. But the one thing that drew me to it is the cranes. 
Now a heron is my absolute favourite bird, they're just so primitive looking and I was able to convince myself that they were herons, they're not, they're cranes, but to me they look like herons and I might be able to do something just a little bit to make them look a bit more like herons. So I've got those two. I have also got the Barbara Anna, the not the most recent one because she's just released another one called I don't know, Dreaming Gardens. This is the Dreaming Frida one which has been the final part of it was released today or well, yesterday now the 1st of May it was released. That's part two. Where's part three? Bear with, bear with. There it is. There's part three. So it's very similar to the Dreaming Girl, but it is um, Dreaming Frida. Uh, and I had so I had somebody message me, and I felt so guilty. I had somebody message me about my Dreaming Girl style, and they were saying, "How are you getting on with it? You know, if you nearly finished it, I really liked your hair colour conversion." I'm like, "Oh, I, I keep wanting to get back to it, but it always seems to be the one that just doesn't quite." doesn't quite get back to it so um i said to myself oh, i'm not going to get the dreaming frida one until i've finished the dreaming girl one but then mm, yeah <laughs> that didn't work out so there's dreaming frida and i really want to get my dreaming girls now because i know i'm going to finish it as well and usually for me that's a really good spur on if i know i'm going to finish something then it spurs me on to finish it so that is dreaming frida I'm not ruling out buying the Dreaming Gardens one as well, but try not to do it till the end of the month. What else have I got? Who else can I blame? The Witchy Stitcher. I blame her for having a new pattern. So I bought Guardian of the Woods. And because no chart can travel alone, even digitally, I picked up the Ginger Dead Man as well love those. I love stitching her things. They're brilliant. We're getting there. We are getting there. I have... I can blame Susie Reno for that one. Let's blame... In fact, we can, we're going to blame Susie Reno for lots of things. So, Susie Reno last year stitched a sampler, a, an ABC sampler from Needlework Press and I'll put the name of it down below because I can never remember it and I absolutely loved it and it got me starting more and more on Needlework Press patterns and actually I think they are some of my absolute favourites so I've made it a mission to start collecting a few more Needlework Press patterns and there's not actually that many hanging about in the UK I know Peakside are trying to increase their stock of Needlework Press patterns uh, and that's what my country sampler order is. That's some needlework press patterns. But I did manage to get this one from from Peakside. Um, Ellen Harrison, 1889. Look at that deer. That deer is amazing. Now this is not actually that humongous. It's 242 by 164. And actually the pattern is only over four pages because um, I must admit when I opened the book I was like they left some pages out of this surely but no it's only four pages so I just think that's so quirky so yeah I'm blaming Susie Reno for, for introducing me to Needlework Press and this one Catherington 1882 I just love that alphabet in the middle love that alphabet in the middle I can't wait to start that one that's just going to be a really nice sort of comfort stitch it is 113 by 125 probably going to end up in sulky probably going to end up oh no that's the really dark one I have got a, a mid coloured sulky that I really like um, there is actually two different coloured uh, two different colours there it's not just a red so that there is a blue border to it which if you look at it quickly, you don't always notice. So there's that one. And then I can definitely blame Susie Reno for this one because she's actually stitching it at the moment. So she got me onto Needlework Press from her last year's stitching and then onto this one. This is Ragamuffin number two. 
Now I've not really given this much of a second glance, but she's stitching it and oh my goodness, it is brilliant, it is beautiful. So that, I might have to, this is by Shakespeare's Peddler. I got this one from Patchwork Rabbit. So if you remember me, I'm gonna put this in a different bag. If you remember me telling you, I have a little um, link with Patrick Rabbit, which is in my description box, which just lets um, Carla and Catherine know that I sent you. Um, and it gives me a very small kickback. I actually remember to use my own link this time. So <laughs> this is quite nice. So yeah, this is Ragamuffin number two. Just the absolute cleanness of that, those alphabets. And then they almost look like I don't know, I don't know. They remind me a little bit of Anne Grimshaw, which obviously is another Quaker sampler. So it's just, just that Quaker alphabet. And then all of those, all of those gorgeous motifs below and that border, that sort of crisscross floral border. So I mean, it's not even really floral, they're just leaves. There's no, nothing else on there. But I cannot wait to start that one. And I bought, again from Patchwork Rabbit, I ordered my Patchwork Rabbit stuff at about half past ten on Friday morning and it came on Saturday. How amazing is that? Excuse me, crinkle crinkle. But these are the over dies for the Bushland Quaker, the birds. Not all of them, because they weren't all in stock, but some of them. Some of the threads are just ordinary DMCs anyway, um, and then I might look out for some of the other ones as well. If not, I will just substitute for what I've got. So there were those. And I also picked up, while I was there, piece of this one and this is called winter moon winter moon so it's it's not as white as it's showing it's definitely a more creamy but it's not a really heavy cream if you like it's a single cream rather than a double cream so I'll grab some of that and then my last piece of haul I actually got today so what, what I got to do today was go to uh, one of my favourite little Welsh towns and there's a couple of really nice little vintage shops and I had wanted one of these and everyone's looking at me going she's gone mad it's a bamboo cane for the garden it's not it's a, a an old yardstick so it's got inches on the one side and it has got like an eighth, a quarter, three eighths, half a yard, five eighths of a yard, three quarters on the back. Now the next question is why would I want something like this? The reason that I want this is because I have got the chart for the One Nation um, American flag, you know, the one with all the states on it. And I, once I've stitched it, bear in mind I haven't stitched it yet, but as I said earlier, if I know how I'm going to finish it, it tends to spur me on. I haven't even started it yet. Not that I haven't stitched it yet, I haven't started it yet, but I have the finishing thing. So what I was going to do was, because it takes up pretty much a fat quarter, I believe, I will suspend it from my yardstick or I'll sort of hang it kind of flag like from my yardstick. Isn't that just the most glorious thing? Can't wait. Can't wait. It might be a year. Don't don't expect to see that next week. And then a couple more things in plans but first I was contacted by a lovely lady whose name is Marie, and I'm just gonna check because I was contacted by two people with the same surname, but slightly different first names. 
So this is Marie and she sent me this lovely card and she said that she had bought one of the Black Needle Society books. She lives in, in Ireland and she'd bought one of the Black Needle Society books and there was a couple of things in there that she um, wondered if she could pass on to me. Um, which was such so very kind of her. Thank you so much, Marie. So she sent me a lovely, lovely card and she said she's stitching Mary Catherine Harris and also the unfinished sample. And then there was some some ribbon. It was so much more nicely more presented than this. I I opened it up and, and then, then put it back in the bag so I knew I, where it was. Everything came wrapped in this gorgeous piece of pansy fabric. Can't wait to use that for some backing. Isn't that lovely and she sent me from her black needle society box just make sure everything's not going to fall out she sent me a thread pickers thread in does it say the color pinotage pinotage and she sent me the whoops the wallet that came with the with the box I'd rather be cross stitching it should have said on the other hand on the other side all buying cross stitch or looking at it on the internet if I stitched for the amount of time that I spent looking at it on the internet I would have so much more done <laughs> so there's that and then she sent me because she said that she uses her iPad to stitch with so she sent me the little phone stand that came and it comes apart like that for a cable hold for your cable like that and it just sits on the desk next to you it says floss tube anywhere everywhere to your right so thank you so much for sending that to me that was really really thoughtful of you to think to think of me and the um the envelope i'm trying not to show anybody's address came with all these cool stickers on it so it felt very special thank you very much and on to my plans my first plan is mania I am going to be starting with blackbird hopefully I'm going to get some stitches in tonight and I am starting with Nikki um, Agnes Platt strawberry sampler and I am we are doing the one at the top there which is called the B Skep. Now I think a lot of other people are doing this one as well. Um, some people I've seen are doing it under the strawberry social hashtag. Um, and <laughs> Nikki actually contacted me and said, I'm gonna rechart the word labor so that it's spelt the, uh, the English way rather than the American way. And she um, she put something about it on Instagram, and Betsy Clegger came up, and she was like, "That's not how you spell labour. This is how you spell labour." And so there's a little bit of to and fro and going on there. Don't get me started on Americans and aluminium. But uh, so she has she has recharted it, so it's spelt L A B O U R. And I think she's done something with the L as well to make it more of an L rather than than an R. So I'm looking forward to stitching her her conversion. So it's special special to us um, these are the threads I don't think it's all of them but I think it's enough enough to get me started I know that's one of the ones that's missing is country redwood I couldn't find that one but it's enough to get me enough to get me going and the fabric is going to be a 36 count one from Victorian Motto when I get down to pull it out of my stash uh, so I'm starting 12 samplers, as I've explained in a previous video somewhere along the line. Uh, I was going to do three days each on the samplers. I think I might only do two, just because I don't know if I want to go. I want this to go into June or not. I'll see how I go. I'll see how I go. Some might get two, some might get three, but I think I'm going to end aim to finish at the end of um, May because I think I'll have uh, be tired of starting things by then, and I want to get back to finishing a few. A few other things so yeah this is my first one for the blackbird um, stitch along Brenda and Laura's blackbird stitch along as well first weekend in every month so this is me kicking off my mania with the blackbird and that is everything thank you so much for coming back and visiting with me 
today. Uh, I hope you enjoy your morning coffee, your afternoon tea or your evening tipple with me, whenever it is you get to watch and I will see you again next week. Stay classy Stitchers!